Keep not the Lord came to repeat his earth. He came with a sword. Shalom, name of the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Time of Night Watch. We're on Time of Night Watch, time of commentary, information, Bible prophecy, and stuff. Well, we'll continue on in the words of God, and what does it all mean? I, I just feel we're an adventure of some kind, exploring our brains, if you will. I mean, the scripture says to be renewing in mind. I mean, it, it clearly takes the revelation of sorts for God to clear the muck and the goo in our heads. I was thinking about this the other day. Like the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, they didn't have as many distractions back then. I mean, life just was life. Uh, they didn't have movie theaters, and they didn't have entertainment, they didn't have TV, they didn't have MTV, they didn't have cell phones. They didn't have a lot of things to distract them. And I imagine their focus was on nature, the creation, and the creator himself. Well, people always busy themselves with, with distractions, with idols and idolatry and other things. I guess, which one are we? Which one we're supposed to be? Are you distracted? Well, again, here we are, trying to expand our minds and look at things in a different perspective. Perspective. Would you believe it? I just suffer from deja vu. Hmm. Anyway, so let's go on. The words of God. What, what does it mean? Now, we've gone through quite a bit here. We were in the face of the deep. Next, we do the deep. So we went from Pa'anim, all the symbology. I mean, it's, it's just, it just, again, it just, it blows me up. So we went from a point, a point of times with Pa'anim, and today we're going to get into the deep. So, and I'll, and I'll warn you now, this could be a very deep topic. If you're not prepared for this, so I can understand why you'd rather be distracted and thinking of something else. Because sometimes this hurts your brain. <laughs> I mean, really. It's like, you're, you're looking at something in an abstract. Uh, it kind of reminds me, of the, back in the day, it's not so many years ago, uh, they used to have these cool looking paintings that you stare at the painting and what, the image changes into a totally different image. And that's kind of like what we're looking at today when it comes to God and his word, or the words. As we discussed before, it's, it's more like pictographs or pictures, and we have to change our mind thought to see things in a different light. So let's continue about deep. Again, the deep subject. In Genesis 1-2, And the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Hmm. So what was deep? All right, so deep in the, in the Hebrew is to home. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I'm sure those people will correct me. And that's okay too. But let's go for the original text or context, if you will. Uh, it's usually the feminine form. Yes, people address the, uh, biblically Hebrew words, both feminine and masculine, which is not so obscure or different in any other languages. It's quite unique. And we're going to discuss a little further as we go on. Uh, the word as an abyss, as surging mass of water, uh, especially the deep, the main sea of the subterranean water supply, deep place or depth. Uh, a primitive root of that is also to make an uproar or agitate greatly, uh, destroy, move, make a noise, put, ring again. Hmm. And that was home. And all those is homam, which is another primitive root, is properly to put in commotion by implication to disturb drive destroy break consume crush destroy discomfort trouble vex notice that the 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 adjectives and the and, and the verbs and the adverbs in there this is like i talked about how much of the ancient hebrew as well as the hebrew is verb there's something going on all the time so the word is to, to home okay let's go back to that and we're going to move that into the ancient Hebrew again. So there's the modern Hebrew you see on top. And we're going to translate that, or maybe it's called transliterate, that into the ancient Hebrew. Let's, to get a better picture of what God is telling us. Remember, the written word of God is a lot different than the verbalization, per se. It was, it was transcribed into the language of the time, which we know is ancient Hebrew. So why change it? See, that's that's my argument and my beef. Heck, believe it or not, that's the Lord's beef as well, too. You know, thus saith the Lord, my Father's word was never meant to be transcribed into different languages, for in doing so, it has lost most of its meaning. Not jot, not one tittle is changed. Well, people have argued, so, well, does that mean we have started learning ancient Hebrew? Well, it wouldn't hurt, but no, it's that's why he left everything in the Holy Spirit, to bring everything in remembrance. So what do I remember? We're remembering the ancient Hebrew. 
Isn't that interesting? So let's get an image what this word means, tahim, and take a deeper look. Hmm. Yes, that was a play on words. <laughs> All right, so these are the word, these are the letters in the ancient Hebrew. That's the the uh, tav, the hey, and the mem. Some of these we've already seen before in previous words. All right, is the modern Hebrew. There's the transliteration of bottom to home, if you will, to ham maybe. Could be argued, I suppose. I mean, I wasn't there, so we're doing the best we can in light of what we have today. And what's beautiful about in Daniel's prophecy, how in the end days, knowledge will increase. Well, as we do increase in knowledge, we also increase in understanding the depth of God and his word, as well as written the word. All right, so let's go to the words, or the letters. The uh, Tav, as you say here, is the ancient picture is a type of mark. Well, that's a bit shocking. Probably of two sticks crossed to mark a place, like the Egyptian hieroglyph. A picture of two cross sticks, this letter has the meanings of mark, sign, and signature. You know, it's really funny. You get these really weird arguments sometimes. You know how the cross is a pagan symbol, and the symbol of the sun rising is for sun worshiping. Remember we discussed this before? God creates, the devil perverts. So, here we have a cross. Hmm, ancient Hebrew. Hello? I don't, maybe maybe it's too obvious. Is it too obvious? What do you think? <laughs> and that was the picture over there on the right. Yeah, it's the crucifix. Isn't it? Is it a coincidence or is it just me? All right, so we start off right off the bat a mark or probably a cross to mark a place like the Egyptian hieroglyph. A picture of two crossed sticks. This letter has the meanings of mark, sign, and signature. Look kind of like X marks the spot. Something like that. Anyway, so we go then to what word is that? Anybody remember? Okay. Anyway, we'll figure it out in a minute. The original picture of this letter is a man standing. We, we, we covered this one before. I, I guess the irony here is that we have, have the one sign above and then the next sign below. All right. So the original pictograph for this letter is a man standing with his arms raised up, the modern Hebrew, and the original name for the last letter is Hey. There you go. Hey! It's like trying to get your attention. God is trying to get your attention here, folks. All right. <clears throat> a Hebrew word meaning behold. I mean, it should be some, some drama, a drum roll, uh, the sound of a trumpet, perhaps. Behold! As when looking at a great sight. This word can also mean breath. Or sigh, as one does when looking at a great sight. The meaning of the letter is behold, look, breathe, sigh, reveal, and revelation. From the idea of revealing a great sight by pointing it out. Hmm. Notice that great sight in the top right hand corner. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this, you know that. Alright, so next is the mem. The early Semitic pictograph of this letter is a picture of waves of water. This pictograph has the meanings of liquid, water, and sea. Mighty and massive from the size of the sea, and chaos from the storms of the sea. And remember the sea? Again, we covered some of this before. But again, this is the deep. It's getting kind of deep here. Whew. Let me take a breather here. Alright, so. Tem tahom. Reminds me of that word Tilim, which is Psalms, but that's an interesting thought. Psalm is Tilim. Probably pronouncing that wrong as well, too. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, so what is the correlation? You see, now you got me thinking way outside of the box with the word Psalm, which is Tilim, and, and now we have to home. It is like. Music. And what, what corresponds to music? I mean, you think you know, on a more scientific level is the waves of sound or waves of music, or waves of frequency. Does God have a frequency? Uh, I've heard that he does. Hmm. So yeah, we get pretty deep here sometimes. So there it is. There's the lettering of the ancient Hebrew, the picture or pictograph, if you will. Of what these letters mean. 
remember, we're talking about the term or the word deep, which we read in, in uh, Genesis 1-2. Wow. All right, so let's move on. All right, so have you ever wondered, though, why doesn't today's Bible have 396 references of water? Like living water, or leaving an image of what the Spirit is like, or life in the Spirit. There can't be no coincidence. So what is, what is water? Folks, what is water? It's something liquid, right? There's some viscosity too when you place it on your skin. This is as clean water. I have clean water. But the but the point is, what is what is water? It's liquid, it's fluid. Um you can contain it, you can allow it to disperse. It has many different forms. It can evaporate. It could turn into the clouds above. It rains, we have water below. So what is this water? The reference is, it's it just almost mind boggling So it can get pretty deep here, folks. Again, renewing your mind. You know, what's this living water God is speaking of? Can you hold it? Can you contain it? Or is it so a mass or so abstract that it's hard to wrap your head around it? Which is exactly where we're going for here. To renewing our mind, to expanding our thought process. And seeing things in a bigger point of view. Remember, so what is this water of the deep? Alright, so we go for the letters, the, the meanings of each letter to the word. We now go back into the numerology. Which you'll find very interesting as well. Alright, so the first letter is... The number 400, it deals in reference to something that is seen as being found in a divinely perfected period of time. And remember last time we covered this, we talked about times period, or periods of time. Hmm, right? Next letter, 5, is generally linked with one having grace and redemption. God's grace, or the life that he lives, that's moved by the Spirit. Now, an added Christian viewpoint, which I understand, is know that this number has also been used in reference that deals with freedom and completeness. You know, you know, Americans, us Americans, we get caught up in the term perfect. That's what that means, completeness. You are made complete and whole through Jesus Christ. Hence, you are made perfect. Deal with it. Okay, so just get over your schisms and dogmas. I mean, that's what that was what perfect means. You're made complete in Christ. So therefore, you are perfect. Get over it. Jeez. Anyway. All right. So, and then the final letter to the word is the number 40. Now, 40, it deals with someone going through some sort of probation or trial period. Hmm. Uh, the viewpoint is know that the number 40 has also been used to describe some sort of divine period of judgment. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is interesting. All right, divine appointment, the judgment, the references of how water works. Does this sound almost like, this, mind you, this is Genesis 1 and 2. Is this kind of like the precursor of a judgment? So you know how the Lord is before, be, uh, during, and after, pre, mid, post, whatever. However you want to look at it, he, he's he's there. <laughs> he sees all, knows all, even before it happens. Do you see the picture? Do you see the picture? Well, I'll tell you what picture came to my mind is that word, <laughs> that picture, to home. There was a lot of water there, and those are the letters. Yeah. Noah's time. Are we getting deep enough for you? Again, this is just this is deep. <laughs> I just I love this term, especially the deep, the main. Okay, how, however you want to look at this in retrospect, okay, or or omnipresently, if you can, looking in the face of God, looking down upon the deep. What do we have here? I mean, think about it. What do we have here? Pretty dark things. Anyway, it's time of night. Watch the time of night. Watch the time of commentary information about proxy stuff. See ya. Don't want to be ya. And remember, I hope and pray that you're calling the narrow way. This is TOTK, the Night Watchman out. Bye.